The Nimitz is a mighty warship, the first in her class and named after one of the Navy's finest admirals. But all her military strength won't help with what she now faces. This is the dry dock process, an event so precise that if the ship is off by more than two inches, she'd have to start all over. Before repairs and renovations can begin, the carrier must back out of her spot on the pier and move a short distance down the Puget Sound to the dry dock location. Like a car in a repair shop, the Nimitz will rest out of the water and on blocks. But first, it'll take hundreds of people working together to get her there. Before dawn, the ship starts edging towards the dry docking area, and it's going to be a long day for Nimitz and her crew. Lieutenant Nigaman is the officer of the deck today which means the well-being of Nimitz falls on her shoulders as she coordinates from the bridge. Currently what we're doing is we're taking the ship into dry dock. So what we've done is we've taken the hauling line and attached it to uh, the pendant that was put through the bullnose of the ship. And what that line is to do is it's literally to haul us in. And what they're gonna do is there's line handlers from the shipyard that are gonna keep putting our, uh, put lines over the ship onto chocks along the side of the ship at the water line. So what happens is they start taking in and putting lines on there with these small little tractors that you're seeing. 35 uh, 10 foot west, slowly drifting and what they're going to do is they're going to even out the way the ship gets walked into the pier to maintain obviously heading and keep a nice slow steady pace that, so we stay centered all the way in until we're over the blocks that we need to be on. We're trying to put over a thousand feet of ship into this one small space uh, and, and it has to be done absolutely perfectly. There's a matter of uh, somewhere around 10 to 12 feet of room on either side of the ship as we slide it into the dry dock. So the uh, work that goes on to very slowly get that ship into the dry dock uh, is, is a very delicate, uh, very specific, and very exacting maneuver. It's a very slow, very painstaking process, uh, but they do it with incredible uh, accuracy. Uh, and, and, and that is partly done because, or, or a result of, uh, all the, the work that they do ahead of time. While Nimitz officers guide her from the bridge, they maintain constant communication with the shipyard crews who are busy guiding the ship from the pier. Um, when we set it down, we, we were allowed two inches out of any planned position. If the bow could be off two, the stern could be off two, or it could be four or half two inches. But anything over that, we reflood and set it back down. So, it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight when you're talking a thousand foot long ship or thirteen hundred foot long ship, and you got to be within two inches. It's pretty tight. There's one foot west, hold steady. There's one foot to the west, hold steady. Typically on carriers, we don't have to worry about that. We get them because they're so big, they hold pretty steady. It's the smaller ships, submarines, stuff like that. They get a little squirrely when we're setting them down. We end up having to flood sometimes reflood and set them back down. But I don't I don't ever remember having to reflood to reset a carrier down. We've always got to with intolerance.
What about the, uh, anybody get any flotation for the ship, for the shipyard? No? Okay. Two guys are helping get in to get back to the CU, and also anybody in today's duty section, you see you too. What we're doing right now is we're continuing to be hauled in by the main hauling line. Um, they have log broncs that are putting basically more lines along on the Dutch bollards at the water line and keep walking us in. So as we get further in, they actually are adding more lines to the ship to bring us into the dock. Um, it's a nice slow movement and as you can hear if you're listening to any of the calls for uh, bow and stern left or, or east or west, that's basically them trying to get us lined up directly on top of the blocks. And right now we're down to a foot from our marks on where they expect us to be. So they're going to slowly keep coming in and then they, what they do is on the lines on the east and west side, they either tension certain lines and uh, they'll basically ease other lines if they need to move the ship as it keeps getting further in the uh, sill because basically what's going to happen is eventually tugs aren't going to be able to be used anymore and we're actually almost at that point right now. So everything's got to be done with lines under power uh, to move the ship. Um, aircraft carrier is a very large gross tonnage, so it takes a lot of power and a lot of lines to move the ship at that point. So that's why they try to get us lined up so precisely before they pull us fully in. A lot of lines under tension. I mean, when, the, when the boat gets in here, there's going to be lines all over the place under tension, tripping hazard. Lines could snap. The main goal is keep everybody safe and everybody goes home the way they came in. The carrier is massive. She needs crews lining both sides of the pier to ensure she pulls into the dry dock unscathed. With that many people at work, safety is a huge concern. This isn't a fast process. It's not meant to be a fast process. It's basically something that you've got to take your time on, otherwise you can either damage the shipyard itself, you can damage the ship, and we don't want to be damaging anything in the process. And really, there is no reason to go fast about this because we want to make sure everyone stays safe in the whole process. They already put the centering tackle on, centering the ship. And then uh, basically what they do from there is once they have the ship centered and they think that we're right where they want us over the blocks, they swim the sill to make sure that it's clear, which they've already done and called us clear. And so the caisson is currently being installed in the aft end of the ship. Um, and the caisson is there to basically seal us in and they can start dewatering the sill. So once they start, um, they can't start dewatering until that sill is completely, like, till we're completely sealed in. And that process of getting the case on in place can take up to an hour, hour and a half. And the reason is because it is a very valuable, like the uh, the seal or the sill that we're in is very valuable. So they have to basically take it slow, you know, be very cautious, make sure that we don't harm anything in the process of trying to do it and not hurry ourselves and actually damage uh, the sill itself. So once they finally have that all in place. Uh, will commence dewatering, and that's just all dependent on how long, how many pumps they have available. Okay, so it's uh, it's about uh, about 10 o'clock. We've been in the dock for about uh, two and a half hours, uh, getting in position. Uh, they just 
brought the case on over and they're getting ready to install it. And we just watched them put power onto it, this big old power cord, and uh, just heard some pumps start up, so it looks like they're starting to pump water into the case on. So basically what we're gonna see is this, uh, this big uh, floating thing here kind of sink into a, uh, a channel. Uh, it's keyed into the side of the dry dock and then uh, that will create a watertight seal. And then uh, once they're, con they're convinced they have a watertight seal, they can start pumping the water out. Um, and right before, they, right before they pump the water out, they're gonna make sure that we are plus or minus two inches side to side, four and a half and askew. So when we land on the blocks, which are on the bottom of the, of the uh, dry dock, we land uh, perfectly straight and in, uh, in a way that'll support the weight of the ship on all those wood blocks down there. With the escort phase complete, the tugboat's back out of the sill. It's now up to the line handlers to bring the Nimitz in. The tugboats begin to maneuver the caisson into position. The caisson will be placed behind the Nimitz, sealing her in so the water can be drained. Basically, we're at the point where we got um, our pilots were ready to disembark the ship and got on our final tug. So the tug that was on the aft end of the ship was actually holding, um, our, not holding our position, but maintaining the speed of which we were going in and could slow us down if necessary. If the winch was bringing us in too quickly. So basically uh, the pilots are now in charge of going over to pick up the case on that's going to seal us into the dock um, once we get the ship fully in. So now the ship is basically under the power of all the lines that we have. We'll actually start dewatering pumps in the caisson, pumping water out of the caisson. So it'll get centered in place. Once it's centered in place, we'll start removing water from the dry dock, lowering the ship down onto the blocks. Then we'll center the ship up over the blocks and land it, pump the dock dry. We've only moved down two feet, so it's you know it's not going to be super noticeable quite yet. But once we've dropped down, you know, another uh, 20 feet, 30 feet, it'll definitely be noticeable from when we started. It's still pretty amazing that they that they can do all that within. They got this thing perfectly centered over these blocks. It's massive, dude. It's a massive ship, and they were able they they got that the stuff down. So I think it's pretty cool. Nimitz has come as far as she can. The dewatering of the dry dock and settling of the ship on blocks falls to the shipyard crew. As they continue to work, the crew on the bridge starts to wrap things up for the day. I mean, it's, it's time for the quarter deck to take over and uh, let the docking officer continue to pump down the uh, sill as soon as they are complete uh, with the 20 Put, uh, the officer of the deck is shifting the watch from the bridge to the quarter deck. We had a minimal amount of folks, but still quite a few people, and they did fantastic. All the things, we, we were underway uh, actually a little bit early, ready to go. The ship uh, performed flawlessly to get to where we needed to be. Uh, everything was set, systems were ready, people were ready, uh, briefed up, they were on time. It was, it was a very interesting process and pretty neat to see. Uh, very well done, and like I said, they, they just nailed it. They did a great job to get us exactly where we needed to be. That was an experience, considering this is the first time in five years I've stood both made of the watch. I'm off now, man. Officer deck shifted the watch from the bridge, so now the boat's made of the watch is no longer required. All words will be passed down from the deck house, the petty officer of the watch. Uh, no need for a BMOW no more, man. So I'm gonna go out right there into the cold and uh, hopefully, hopefully get to go home pretty soon, get some sleep. But uh, it's been a long morning, but it's finally over. <laughs> it's an honor to actually get to do this because this isn't something you do every day, um, and it was. Uh, it went very smoothly. We were very lucky to have a great crew working. Everybody was on board with getting 
stuff done proactive and uh, verbal about when things weren't going the way they needed to. Everybody did really well and it made our job up here on the bridge a lot easier. So uh, everybody's happy, captain's happy, the navigator's happy. and. The crazy thing is that now we are 